So in today's video, I'm gonna go over some of the things that I think are crucial to having a successful co-angler season. Stay tuned, it's coming up. Alrighty y'all, Lou here from Beyond the Bounce. This is a channel geared towards bass fishing, gear reviews, tournament footage. So if you like that sort of thing, hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that bell so you get notified when I release new videos. Today's video is gonna be about essential gear and items, things that will help you out when you're going to compete in your first year or maybe even a second year as a co-angler. So I recently completed my first year as a co-angler on the FLW tour, a BFL tour. And you know, it was a fantastic learning experience. I went everywhere from Lake Champlain, Thousand Islands, fished multiple times on the Potomac. It was just really a great experience and I learned a lot because what I'm trying to do with myself and in my fishing career is just become the best angler that I possibly can. No one starts off just being incredibly awesome all the time, knows everything about this. This is a constant learning process and you have to be on the water. And it helps for me to be in that situation, especially on the back of the boat, to where I can learn from the person on the front of the boat. So here are some of the things that I learned right away that were crucial to making my year as a co-angler pretty productive and fun overall. I learned a ton, so let's get into those. Uh, number one is make sure you have the right tackle bag. Having a good tackle bag really, really matters. Um, I started off the year with this guy right here just because I went to my first event, hadn't bought a bag yet, and I was like, you know what, I need, I need something, something that's gonna do me good. This is kind of a waterproof, uh, Bass Pro Shop. I wouldn't advise this. All right, one, everything's just kind of not organized in there. Even if you do organize it, you pull one thing out, stuff falls together, and and then you're just rummaging around trying to find things. So it's not going to help you be fast and effective on the water. So get yourself a good tackle bag. Watch my tackle bag review on the one that I actually use. It's just another Bass Pro Shop. It's a blue Bass Pro Shop tackle bag and you know, it is a phenomenal tackle bag that doesn't cost that much. It's not an arm and a leg to purchase that tackle bag because you really shouldn't be spending some $200 uh, for basically a backpack. In that same token though, I would highly recommend that you get a backpack style tackle bag, co-angler bag, because that will allow you to hand carry your rods, maybe even strap them to the tackle bag if, if possible, but it frees up your arms because you might need to carry some other stuff. Maybe you're carrying a bag of ice, maybe you're carrying a small cooler or something like that. So having your arms free to be able to, to carry other things, maybe you've got some really bulky rain gear or something like that, really helps to have a tackle bag that is a backpack in that situation. All right, so the next thing is proper rain gear. Guys, I can't hype on this one enough. It is very important, highly crucial to have proper rain gear. Now, I joined uh, the Gill Pro Staff uh, this year uh, because one, I'm a YouTuber and I knew I could uh, bring more notoriety to their products. Uh, they got a lot large pro staff, but generally it's just a small logo down there. And you don't necessarily see them using uh, the rain gear all the time. Now I've done plenty of videos this year to where my rain gear, my gill rain suit, my insulated suit was <laughs> paramount to my success just on those days, just having a good day, one, but to stay dry. And, and that's where this is gonna come in very important, guys. You want to stay dry because you're gonna be fishing in all kinds of conditions, rain, cold, sleet, snow. You never know what it's gonna be on that day and you really need high quality rain gear. And I can absolutely attest uh, whether, whether I was pro staff or not, I, I don't intend to re-up with them this next year. Um, because I've already got my great products. But you know what, it's one of those things to where I can attest that it's phenomenal rain gear, it really is. And, and I would put my money behind that and purchase it you know, at full price myself any day of the week because it's really high quality stuff. You know, I recommend that you try to get at least two sets of rain gear, one kind of for your summertime and one for your winter and, and colder time of fishing because I utilize both of them. 
uh, throughout the year just on my boat and through my co-angling events and you really need a good bib system to go along with this rain gear as well as water boots i use nrs uh, they were my kayak boots that i had for you know a couple years already and i really like using them because i can still step in the water get those wet pretty much all the way up to my mid calf there and that allows me to do things when i'm launching the boat and my feet are able to get wet all day long and it never causes me any discomfort or or gets cold or anything like that so but having bibs is very important especially when you're running down the water you know having something with a face shield very important because a lot of the time you're going to be in the co-angler seat you're not going to have that protection afforded to you like the driver will a uh, matter of fact when, when i was down in uh, santee cooper this year running my boat down there uh, my buddies were just covered in bugs across their face they had their their who rags up and everything and just covered uh, in, uh, in, in bugs where I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. So, you know, you're gonna get hit by a lot more stuff over here on this side. So having that good gear, guys, I, I can't say enough about having good gear, good rain gear, good quality rain gear. But look for those in your rain gear, good face shield, good hood, insulation for the winter. Those are important things. All right, so let's talk PFDs. Now, when you are going on someone else's boat, you need to bring your PF, your own PFD. Don't don't think that they're always going to have everything that you're going to need, like coal tags and scissors and stuff like that. Get your own PFD. Um, know that you know not all PFDs are created equal. Okay, your inflatables and stuff—they're very comfortable. They're very lightweight. They don't take up a lot of room, but they're also not as safe. You might want to get a type one PFD because this is a PFD that will rotate you over if you've been ejected from the boat. And don't think that just because you're riding along with some pro angler who's on the FLW tour that you won't get, I think it's called a Bill Sermon, that you won't pull a Bill Sermon. Uh, so if you haven't, if you don't know or aren't familiar with that, that's basically being ejected from the boat after hitting a wave going in excess of 50 miles an hour. You could be in a, a serious situation there, especially if both people get ejected from the boat. And it's possible that it could happen. Unfortunately, you know, this last year, we started off on a very sour note where uh, a co-angler by the name of Nick Haler actually lost his life. Now, I don't want that to uh, dissuade you from participating in these events. I mean, these are kind of the one-offs that actually happen and they're very sad. And, you know, it's sad that that had to happen, but you can't live your life like that and, and be like, oh, well, I'm just scared something's gonna happen. You're never gonna get anywhere if you just allow that fear and other fear to control your life. So go out there, you know, hop in somebody's boat, be a co-angler, just know that a PFD, the right type of PFD could very well save your life. All PFDs are designed to save your life. All right, line snips. Um, I don't have them with me here, but I carry a very specific line snip with me. It's great because it just goes in your pocket. You're not always having to get down, get to the, uh, the boaters, scissors or anything. Please don't leave scissors on seats. You don't want to sit on one, rip somebody's seat or anything because by golly, these seats are expensive to replace. I mean, they don't call it break out another thousand for another reason. It's because things are expensive to replace and repair hair but you know bring your own snips that allows you to be fast and effective on the water to just be in the back taking care of your stuff reach in your pocket snip something reach back in your pocket and put it back where it belongs in that same token you know you actually you know it it's beneficial if you wear pants with pockets on there not just you know two pockets in the front and the back but wear maybe wear some type of cargo pants or, or something like that because that's going to give you ex extra storage in there for holding on to baits and stuff like that and, and things in your pockets to make you just able to pull it out like i said snip something put it right back in and maybe even change out a few lure presentations now i'm not advocating that you stick a bunch of treble hooks or anything in your pocket like that please don't do that especially down near little jimmy down there so you know that that's gonna you're gonna want to shy away from any sharp objects in this in this area. You wanna have different worm presentations and all that maybe are rigged up like a, a Cinco, a Cinco with a nail weight in it so you can go from Nico to weightless in an instant, then that's something that you really could benefit from with having different pockets in there, different brands, worms in different sides so that you know when you reach in there, bam, that's the weighted Cinco, bam, that's the, the weightless Cinco right there. Or maybe different color presentations to allow you to rotate through things really fast and effectively. Again. It's always about being fast and efficient, unless you're being slow and efficient, which kind of works too. 
slow and methodical. That, that works, but you're always having to adjust to changing conditions based on that person who's driving the boat and who's controlling it in the front of the boat. Uh, you don't necessarily have to bring a balance beam, but if you want to, by all means, again, choose the right tackle bag to allow you to carry whatever you need. Something like this, again, is gonna be very bulky and big and gonna be hard, won't necessarily fit in a rear compartment. So try not to go this route. Also, some boaters are very particular about their co-angler's tackle. They shouldn't be, but they are. And those are the type of people that are gonna create an interesting situation for you uh, to deal with if you're in their boat and you've got more tackle than they think you should have. So just saying it could happen. And if you condense that into a smaller package, that will help you mitigate those instances. Let's just say. Okay, so one of the other things that you're gonna need are cold tags. Make sure you bring your own cold tags. These are the TH Marines. They are punctureless. Uh, they are pretty diagonal good. They're a little bit hard to, to get clipped on because you have to kind of, I mean, this, this contraption here is, is, once it locks down, it's nice and firm and I have not had a single fish come off of one of these, but it holds right in the bottom of the lip of the fish and you're gonna wanna need to bring your own. That way you can call out your own fish, get into your tank and pull those fish out. You're not trying to scoop them up with your, your bare hands and because they can actually jump out. Uh, don't ever open your boaters live well unless they specifically ask you to. Bring your own cold tags. I can highly recommend these, although they are not the easiest in the bunch to get situated on. Welcome aboard. Uh, takes a little bit of practice, but once you're kind of holding down in, in the fish's mouth, you just kind of hold it down, pinch that, and then slide it down into the fish's mouth there. So, TH Marine, cold tags, definitely, uh, definitely really good cold tags, but like I said, may not be the easiest and fastest to clip on there. Uh, the cool thing about these that I will say that's probably better is that they're not large. They're not really big. Uh, so that you don't have something bulky inside of the fish's mouth actually holding that fish's mouth open uh, That's actually not good for the fish and you could actually kill your fish by having some that are too bulky uh, I never had a fish die on these cold tags at all this year can highly recommend these But make sure you bring your own because you can't think that the boater is gonna have uh, another set of cold tags for you. All right, tackle, all that kind of gear, that's gonna be on you. You're gonna have to choose which rods and reels that you wanna bring with you, but bring stuff that's versatile. You know, don't just bring the, the super, you know, the, the super light action rod and think that you're gonna be able to do a lot of presentations with that. Unless that's your bag, unless that's your go-to things that you're the most confident in, bring something like a loose TP1 series, multi-purpose rod that's gonna be able to throw Spinner baits, crank baits, worms, jigs, uh, any basically anything that you can think of, um, and, and put line on there so that it can throw those variety of uh, presentations. So plan to be as versatile and as fast and effective on the water as you possibly can. Other things you're going to need are sunglasses, uh, what a you know sun protection, something to cover your face with uh, when the this actually FLW hoodie that I picked up. Check this thing out; it's pretty cool. That's pretty cool right there, guys. You know, you add some, some sun protection here as well because you'll always be getting reflection coming up off the water and that's gonna, you know, produce more sun uh, damage to your skin. Uh, but something like this, this is pretty cool. I actually like this. Just picked this up uh, prior to Christmas when I was signing up for the next FLW season and highly, highly like this. It was only like 20 something bucks too. It feels really good. Makes me look buff. Next on the list is this company actually sent these to me last year. This is the potty pack in the uh, crap kit. Let's go with crap kit so I don't get demonetized. Uh, but you know, the, the crap kit here has a toilet paper, wet whites, disposal, disposable bag, hand sanitizer. Um, I really like these as an overall and yeah, they sent these to me, but these are actually something that I will buy more of. One, because they just fit everywhere. You know, if you want to put something in your hunting bag, just slide this in. Uh, you know, in your hiking bag, just slide it in. They take up very little room. They have disposable bags, especially this one, the, the crap kit. Instead of taking a big roll or unrolling a bunch of toilet paper, you just have this thing and its own little self-contained thing. This is pretty ingenious. 
Uh, and you know, I don't carry a big wad of toilet paper on my boat. I just carry uh, several of these and that, that, handles, that handles things. And it's not, like I said, some bulky uh, TP type of solution fluttering up the back of my boat here or my co-angler bag. So these things, like I said, fit really well into there. Just be prepared. Hey, when it happens, it happens. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Potty packs. Okay, yeah, so, uh, you know, just, just to give this company a shout out, because I really appreciated that they sent these to me. This is not a sponsorship, this is not anything. They sent them to me and said, hey, if you could use these in a couple videos, we'd appreciate it. And I was like, okay, that, that's actually something that sounds like I could use. So, pottypacks.com, look them up, order you some, order you a big pack, keep them in your truck, keep them in your boat, keep them in your camper, keep them in your car, hike bag, camp bag, all that stuff, tackle bag. All right, so next thing on the list that you're gonna need is when you're transporting your rods, it actually really helps to have some rod socks on there. Now these are actually the original rod socks. These are the ones that I recommend not a sponsored product, just a product that I like and believe in for several reasons because I like how the construction of these are made. I like that it's wrapped with this rubber tip down here to protect the, the rod tip. Um, this year I've had all rod socks, all loose products and not broken a single guide or rod. And this is what I attribute to those. But you know, you've got this protective rubber cusp down here on the trumpet end and that that protects from hooks getting stuck in there. Now, hooks will get stuck in this. If you get a crankbait that falls off and then bounces back into this, it's gonna get stuck in it, you know, but it's pretty easy to get them out because again, you just kinda Chinese finger trap it right there and open that up and that allows you to get that hook out of there. Um, but they don't, they're all in really good condition. They maintain their color really well, but they protect your rods from moving around because your rods are gonna go inside of the boat, they're gonna go in the truck, they're gonna be in situations to where they're not protected all the time and you know you need to have something that's going to help protect them uh, but also you'll need something to wrap your rods together with that way you can carry them as a whole unit that'll allow you to uh, transport your rods again fast effective and efficiently the problem with taking these on the boat is that if you're not constantly putting them back on they tend to clutter up things so you know you either have to get into the pattern of putting these things back on and or throwing them you know in, in your tackle bag and putting them all together in your tackle bag in some form or fashion but but also bring like i said something like a night eyes uh twist tie to go around all your rods and secure your rods in 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 one tight bundle um they make specific things to do that i'm just giving you another option that you can use the night eyes twist ties i love night eyes products not a sponsored product or anything like that just telling you because i like using them and I believe in them. Uh, last but not least, well, a couple, couple more things, you know, bring you a couple snacks throughout the day. You don't wanna be dehydrated, so you're gonna need food, water. Uh, dehydration on the water can cause tons of problems, guys. I don't want you falling over, uh, but, you know, bring, bring food. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention is bring some type of face gear. Uh, you can either use this safe face type thing or some ski goggles. I actually tend to prefer my ski goggles, but I carry this on the boat just for other situations too. You know, maybe I've got some friends coming along, so I give this to them to wear. But you know, having some goggles will, will really help cut down on things that you're putting inside your pack. But those are things that you need because even with sunglasses, I mean, you could be getting hit by cold, rain, maybe hail or something like that at times. You never know what type of conditions you're going to be driving in. Uh, matter of fact, that's why you don't really know because you're not really driving. The other person's really driving and it's really up to them. Uh, you're just along for the ride. Uh, so carry along some type of protective face and eye gear. Again, I highly recommend uh, goggles. I use a pair of Oakleys that I bought some years ago. Now, last but not least, uh, this is something that I picked up this year specifically for actually several reasons. Uh, I don't get the best cell reception because I don't pay that much for my cell phone. Also, my phone's not waterproof. Also, what if you get ejected from the boat and you don't have anything on you? then how are you gonna call for help? Uh, that's why I'm going to carry a, a VHF radio this year and I'm gonna fasten this to my PFD so that I always have it on me. Um, you can turn these on. This is a rechargeable New Horizon one. I got it off of uh, Amazon. But if you're ejected from the boat and your phone gets wet and no longer works, you have horrible cell reception, which normally a lot of these places do have horrible cell reception, then something like this really could be a lifesaver, guys. And it's about a 80 bucks, uh, anywhere from 80 to 150 dollar purchase but it's something that i'm keeping on my boat all the time uh, because again what happens if you have a, a problem and you break down and you don't have any 
cell reception or, or your phone's damaged or your battery's dead, then what are you gonna do? You know, so having a VHF radio that you can call the Coast Guard call, call for help on, can be very important. This is a waterproof one, has a pretty high quality clip, not a sponsored item. You know, I'm just telling you to help you out, giving you some ideas of what to carry uh, in your co-angler bag on your person during your first uh, season or you know subsequent seasons of being a co-angler. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm doing other videos in this series about being a co-angler, kind of recapping my co-angler year. Also, you know, giving you ideas on tips and tricks for being a co-angler. So stick around for those, watch those that are in the playlist. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Y'all have a good one. You know, something like this could really save your life. If you're ejected from the water, or <laughs> ejected from the water, <laughs> that would actually be better for you. Um, that you won't get, that you won't pull a bull. Uh, <laughs> I will buy some more. Loud car, we'll just let that loud car go by.